Welcome to the Harvilla Polaris on the Norwegian coastal route. As you can see, it's winter. Let's go inside and take a closer look at this wonderful ship. I've just spent 12 days on the Harvilla Polaris, one of four brand new coastal cruise ferries from Harvilla, the newest operator of ships on the Norwegian coastal route. In this video, I'll take you on board the Harvilla Polaris so you can decide if a voyage on this vessel is the right choice for you. All four ships in the Havila fleet are essentially the same. Powered by LNG and batteries, they are the newest and greenest ships sailing the coastal route today. It's important to say up front that the Havila Polaris is primarily a working ferry and not a cruise ship, but it does offer a super comfortable experience for round trip cruise passengers. The design takes a lot of inspiration from cruise ships. It has high quality cabins, a fantastic observation lounge, and a choice of lounges and dining venues throughout the ship. I boarded in Bergen, which is where round trip cruise passengers board. Here you'll find a terminal where you check in, but if you're taking a shorter voyage and boarding somewhere else, you'll likely just walk straight on. Now come on board and I'll show you around. All embarkation, disembarkation and port call service apart from in Bergen takes place using the main gangway leading into the reception area on deck 4. Guests familiar with the coastal route will immediately notice the difference with this airy atrium and glass elevator taking pride of place. The main reception is staffed 24-7 and there is a small luggage storage room here for passengers who are travelling short distances or those who have already checked out of their cabins. The main stairwell and elevator leads to all floors, so let's start the tour by going all the way to the top of the ship. As you can see, this atrium is a wonderful feature of the ship, and helps fill the public areas with natural light. The ship is not big, so I didn't use the elevators very often, but I did enjoy the arrival up on deck 9 when I did use them, with the outside view often contrasting with the warmth inside the ship. Deck 9 is known as the Promenade Deck, which as the name implies is mainly an outdoor deck. However, at the front of Deck 9 is this wonderful observation lounge and bar called Havblik. This room is a light airy space with fantastic views from almost all seats, thanks in part to the large windows and in part to the raised area in the middle, a really nice design choice. I filmed most of this video during a long port call in Olesund, when the ship was almost empty, but when we were sailing, this was the busiest lounge, especially after 2pm when the bar was open. Wines, beers, spirits, coffees, soft drinks and cocktails are all available here. In the afternoon, Havblik also hosts a small snack lounge for passengers with the Havila Gold package. In the evenings, the occasional event took place here, including a trivia contest and a live performance from one of the crew. The rest of Deck 9 is all outside, beginning with this superb walkway that wraps all the way around the outside of the observation lounge. You can see the sea underneath this part of the walkway though, so it's not for those who get a little nervous about these things, it's also extremely windy here. However, I think the view from up here was well worth it. I particularly enjoyed this spot during sail-ins and sail-aways, although I was always a little mindful about not standing right in front of someone who had a window seat in the observation lounge. This outdoor promenade deck continues all the way to the back of the ship. This is a great place for hunting the northern lights during the evenings, or just soaking up the scenery during the daytime, although as I said before it is of course windy out here most of the time, and especially when the ship is at sea. This walkway at the aft of the ship is possibly the best place for landscape photography. As long as you wrap up warm, you'll get some great shots from here to the back of the ship, including the wake and the flag of Norway. Aside from two exclusive suites, Deck 8 is another outdoor deck. You probably already spotted them earlier, but it's here you'll find the two hot tubs, open throughout the day as long as sea conditions allow. Near the hot tubs you'll find an outdoor bar, open for periods throughout the cruise, notably when the Havila Food Stories events take place. When the bar is closed, this is still a great area for watching the world go by in the daytime, or stargazing or northern lights hunting by night. 
Just inside on deck 8 you will find two saunas. There's access doors to these from both the inside and outside parts of the deck. You'll also find a small smoking area on deck 8. One floor down on deck 7 you'll find a selection of premium rooms and inside cabins as well as a small promenade with access to the lifeboats. Aside from that there are two separate fitness rooms here, one on either side of the ship. One is for cardio training and one is for weight training. Both rooms are very small but they have good views and were generally very quiet throughout the voyage. The majority of the ship's facilities are located on one main deck, deck 6. This deck is really well designed, making excellent use of natural light. Every available window space has comfortable chairs nearby, enabling guests to make the most of the scenery. The Harvey Cafe is open until late and serves snacks, drinks including beers, and a menu of light meals. This cafe is designed mainly to serve local passengers, although plenty of round-trip cruise passengers made use of the area too. That includes me. I spent a lot of time in here, and not just because of the coffee machine and cinnamon buns. The ever-changing view through the large windows is better than any cafe I've been to before. Through the cafe and past this relaxed seating area is the ship's main restaurant, Havran. This large space at the back of deck 6 is where round-trip passengers will enjoy breakfast, lunch and dinner, all served a la carte. You'll keep the same table for all three meals throughout your trip. The design of this spacious restaurant means there are plenty of window seats and good views from everywhere else. It's definitely a pleasant place for three meals a day. If you do fancy a change, there is the cafe, but there is also a fine dining restaurant, Hildering, which comes at an extra charge. Sweet passengers can also order breakfast in here. But there's more to deck six than just the dining venues. Towards the front of the ship, there's the excursion desk for booking trips and making general inquiries about destinations. Beside this, a small conference room is used mainly by the expedition team to give daily updates on the voyage, available excursions, and any general information. They also share some small insights into Norwegian culture each day, themed around the current destination. Also located here is the ship's shop. This sells good quality outdoor clothing from leading Norwegian brands, woolen clothing, hats, gloves and slippers, Havila branded items, postcards, mugs, books, gifts, personal items and toiletries that you may have forgotten to bring. The forward part of deck 6 is taken up by the bow lounge, which I found to be one of the quieter parts of the ship. That's likely because there were fewer windows here. Nevertheless, I found it a super relaxing space, especially in the evenings. There's also jigsaws here and a small area for children, not that you'll probably encounter too many children on board unless it's the school vacation period. This is also where you'll find the access point to the bow viewpoint at the very front of the ship. This is only open when sailing through calm waters and when the weather allows, but when it is accessible, the view from out here can be truly sensational. Now, I know a lot of you watching will have been waiting for the cabin tour, so here we are. One thing I do like about the Polaris is that even on one of the cabin decks, deck 5, there's this comfortable lounge with large windows. My cabin though was on deck 4, just down from the reception at the very front of the ship. That did mean I felt the movement more, but it also meant I had a differently shaped cabin with more space. As you can see, the cabin is up to the standard of a cruise ship, far better than you'd expect on a ferry. One of the benefits of it being a new ship is that the heating and air conditioning system actually works, something that is rarely the case on older ships or even in hotels on land. Facilities included an in-room kettle, a TV although I barely switched it on, a fridge which I kept stocked with soft drinks bought from supermarkets ashore, another benefit of travelling on a ferry, and a telephone. The phone doubled as a loudspeaker for the shipwide announcements, including northern lights alerts, but only if you wanted them. This was optional and a simple button press turned the announcements on and off. Best of all, the room had plenty of storage space, so it was super easy to keep tidy. My suitcase fit under the bed, which is always a plus. 
Opposite my cabin was a small laundry. I didn't use it, but I took a quick look so I could show it to you. During a quiet port call, the hotel manager was kind enough to let me take a quick look at some of the other grades of cabin that were vacant. Firstly, this is an example of a junior suite, of which there were just 10 on the Harvilla Polaris. These contain a comfortable living and working area, a bedroom area, and a balcony. The TV can be flipped between the two areas, and there is a slightly bigger bathroom. Back down on deck 4, this is an example of an inside cabin. Much smaller, but still comfortable, the inside cabins are really designed for shorter journeys. Most sleep too, but one of the beds will be a fold-down bed. They are the most economical way to travel. That being said, there is one more option. A port-to-port -port lounge is available for passengers just travelling a few hours or maybe the whole day, but who don't need a cabin. This does come at an extra charge, but it includes coffee and a quiet space where you can relax, recline and catch some sleep. I thoroughly enjoyed my time on the Harvilla Polaris. To see what the experience was like sailing the Norwegian coastal route on this ship in the winter, watch this video next.